Visa and MasterCard are the two biggest credit card and debit card processors in the US, accounting for $77 billion worth of merchant fees each year. Those are the fees that merchants pay when you swipe your credit card during a transaction. Typically, they average around 2% for US credit cards. But now JP Morgan Chase is working to develop its own in-house payment system that doesn't need to go through a third party such as Visa or MasterCard. This is known as pay by bank and it could put Visa and MasterCard out of business. And we're gonna tell you how in this video. But first of all, if you're watching this video, you're obviously into money. And right now is a great time to start investing in the stock market because the markets are down and there's general negativity in the economy, which puts stocks on sale. And now as a boost to kickstart your portfolio, you can get up to 12 free stocks when you open an account and deposit any amount of money with the brokerage app Webull. Now it's the luck of the draw what you get, but the absolute minimum value you could get out of this is $34 and it could be up to over 30 thousand dollars in value for those free stocks. Webull, of course, is the great zero commission stock brokerage app. I like to call it Robin Hood for grown-ups because its charts and tools are so much more advanced than those of Robin Hood, which is one of the most popular apps out there for stock trading. So if you are interested in this deal, do click my link below to find out more and sign up. So in this video, I am gonna be referencing this article from the Financial Times entitled, How JP Morgan's Plan to Kill Credit Cards Split the Bank. Now as credit card enthusiasts, we are probably looking at this feeling a little bit perplexed since Chase offers some of the best credit cards out there on the US credit card market with amazing rewards for free travel, airport lounge access, all of that good stuff. So what exactly is going on? Are they really going to kill their own credit card products to launch a next generation payment system? Just like Apple had to kill its own iPod in order to launch the iPhone. Well, JP Morgan CEO, Jamie Dimon, held a meeting with executives from two different departments within the bank last November, where they hashed out a plan to develop this in-house payment system that doesn't require cooperation with third parties such as Visa and MasterCard. Chase also bought the payments company Renovite, which can be seen as a further development in this process. Now, the idea to develop an in-house payment system had caused conflict between two different departments within Chase, hence the title of that article that it split the bank. Okay, these two different departments are the Corporate and Investment Bank and the Consumer and Community Banking Division. And it caused this split because a new payments network has the potential to wipe out Chase's existing credit card business, which brings in approximately $5 billion a year in revenue for the company. But as the Financial Times summarized, Diamond, however, reckoned it was better to risk existing revenue than allow non-bank competitors to beat JP Morgan to the punch. This is because in recent years, we have seen countless innovative startups using technology to turn the existing banking industry upside down. For example, you can use Zelle to make bank payments instantly rather than waiting overnight for an ACH transfer. Venmo offers similar instant services. But right now, if you want an instant payment from a debit or credit card, merchants on average get charged between 1.4% for a debit card and 2.1% for a credit card payment. Debit card transactions are limited by the Durban Amendment to the Dodd-Frank Act, which limits them to 0.05% of the transaction plus up to 21 cents. That is the maximum banks are allowed to charge, but then the payment processors could add in their markup, which takes the average rate up to 1.4%. But people and merchants have got a taste for the fee-free transfers of Zelle and Venmo. Chase has integrated Zelle into its banking system. However, it's not as easy to pay a merchant in store with Zelle because the merchant has to provide a phone number and then be added as a contact. And it's really not as quick as just swiping a card. The Federal Reserve is now also coming out with an instant payment system called FedNow, which will be operational in the year 2023, so just next year, and it's much faster than the current offerings such as ACH and wire transfers. And that is why Jamie Dimon believes that the time is now to move on pay by bank. But in discussing whether this is going to kill credit cards, you have to look at the short term and the long term. The crucial thing about the short term is this. JP Morgan believes pay by bank is an alternative for rent and bill payments, as well as cash, high price debt and checks, rather than for credit cards, according to people involved in the project. But in the long term, this could really shake up the credit card industry and end credit cards as we know them. And here's my analysis of why. The merchants may end up saying that they will charge a fee for credit card purchases since they have access to an alternative, widely available free 
or very low fee system in FedNow or Chase's new pay by bank system. Let's say they charge a 3% fee for credit cards and a 1.5% fee for debit cards. If that was to really happen, most people would abandon credit cards for everyday spending such as groceries because the fee that they would have to pay would outweigh any rewards they earned on the transaction. Perhaps they would still opt to use a credit card and just eat the 3% fee in order to get extended warranty on that thousand dollar washing machine that they're buying. But in most everyday cases, they are not going to tolerate a fee. Now, some states make it illegal for merchants to add a processing fee for credit cards. Those states are California, Colorado, Connecticut, Florida, Kansas, Maine, Massachusetts, New York, Oklahoma, and Texas. Although to be honest, here in New York, I've seen some restaurants already adding fees even though it's illegal. MasterCard and some other networks also limit the adding of fees to educational institutions, government agencies, utility companies, and a few other businesses. So in these states, once businesses have widespread access to these very cheap or fee-free pay by bank or fed now systems of payment, certain businesses might actually stop accepting credit cards altogether, which would lead to a decline in credit card use and thus a decline in the quality of the cards on offer in the US credit card market. Since banks fund credit card rewards like cashback and airline miles from the merchant fees they charge, with these gone, they won't be able to provide such high rewards multipliers on spending. That's why credit card rewards rates on credit cards in the UK, for example, are so bad compared to their US counterparts. The UK and the EU both limit credit card fees to 0.3% of the transaction. Thus, credit cards over there have to earn most of their money through annual fees, interest charges and late fees rather than merchant fees. So perhaps expect to see higher annual fees, higher interest rates and lower credit cards bonuses and earnings rates sometime after the Fed Now system rolls out in 2023. That is possible that it could happen, but now I'll tell you why I don't think it's quite as bad as you may have initially thought. Yes, there will be a new cheaper system. That is inevitable, okay? The writing was on the wall. You had many contenders for it, cryptocurrencies contending to create a new cheaper system of payments. Now the Fed's stepping in with Fed now, different banks are looking into it. So there's kind of a race going on now to provide a cheaper instant payment system. However, people like using credit cards because they like the $0 liability protection. They like extended warranty or the insurances that credit cards provide. For example, I would never pay for gas with a debit card because if there is a skimmer on that pump and they steal my numbers, they can take money directly out of my bank account. And even if I complained to the bank and said there's fraud, while the bank is conducting its investigation, my bank account is still down, could be several hundred, even a thousand bucks. However, if I use a credit card, that puts a wall between my money and potential thieves. And if thieves do get my credit card numbers and they manage to spend money on my credit card, well, I just tell the credit card company because they're spending their money, not mine. So they'll just put a freeze on it. I don't have to worry about it. And once the investigation is done, it will be wiped. People are still gonna want this feature of credit cards and they're still gonna want payment cards that extend manufacturer's warranties, that offer travel insurance on flights, lost baggage insurance, etc. And the money to pay for all this has to come from somewhere. Well, we know from research that credit cards do psychologically stimulate consumers to spend more. So if Chase manages to create its own system or use FedNow, cut out Visa and MasterCard and issue credit cards that work on these new lower fee systems, they could considerably lower fees for merchants since they've cut out the middleman, however, still charge something. And they may be able to still sell that to merchants because credit cards stimulate higher spending. And that is scientifically provable. There have been studies by MIT that show that that really is the case. And people still want their liability insurance, their extended warranty, their baggage insurance. So they will most likely continue using credit cards over Zelle and Venmo as long as there is no surcharge in place. And banks and credit card companies certainly have a lot of lobbyists in DC who will campaign for laws to protect their businesses. Maybe they will campaign for lawmakers to make it illegal to add a surcharge for a credit card. Who knows? But the money has to come from somewhere to pay for these features that people love about credit cards. And I don't think people are going to change their behavior anytime soon. However, looking further into the future, we may see some rebalancing of where the money comes from to pay for cards and 
the levels of rewards that are actually handed out. Maybe we will see lower earning rates on everyday spending. However, banks may still manage to keep payment cards exciting and save consumers money through discounts with luxury hotels, for example, or airport lounge networks. We already see Chase and Capital One opening up new airport lounges, their own brand of airport lounges in airports across the country. Perhaps this is preparation for payment cards that offer lower rewards rates, so have to offer more exciting benefits in order to justify current or even higher annual fees. I don't know guys, but maybe you have some ideas. Leave your comments about that below. And don't forget, you can get up to 12 free stocks for signing up and depositing any amount of money with the brokerage app Webull. Link for that is below. Also, if you are interested in Chase credit cards such as the Sapphire Preferred, Sapphire Reserve, or any other credit cards that we regularly talk about in our videos, such as the Capital One Venture X, which is pretty much the best credit card of this year, I'll put my credit card guide below where you can find mini reviews and links to many of the cards that we talk about in our videos. Of course, it helps our show if you use our links, so we do thank you very much if you use them. Advertiser disclosure right at the bottom of the description section below. Please subscribe to the channel if you're new guys, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.